Well, hello, Nadine. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Yes, I'm so excited to talk to you. One of the OG travel vlogger YouTubers on YouTube. And just to talk about your just incredible journey from way back in the day, <laughs> practically when YouTube first started, um, before you know yeah. creators are monetized, to today. So why don't we first get started with what inspired you to get onto YouTube all those years ago and just kind of like a Cliff Notes version of your journey from then to, to now. And then we'll dig into some of the some of the different pieces as we go along. Sounds good. So I started back in, I found YouTube back in 2005. This was the first year it even existed. And the only thing that was really on it was clips that were pirated from TV. So uh, various little sports clips or other shows that you couldn't find because there's no streaming, mm -hmm. they were uploaded onto YouTube. And I was really, really big into High School Musical. Okay. And they had the songs uploaded onto YouTube. And I was like, yes. And so I just loved just being able to watch that. Mm -hmm. So that's how I found YouTube. And um, as I kind of explored the platform back then, I realized that there were people posting these videos and it was mostly sketch comedy like that was that was what was really on the platform at the time and they were just they weren't like pro heavy production videos they were all filmed with webcams not very good webcams and just kind of uh, essentially what TikTok is like yeah. maybe a couple years ago when TikTok first kind of started. That is what it was. And I found this girl called Abby Girl and she was posting these funny videos and I was like, oh my gosh, she's so funny. She's just a regular person. I was like, why don't I do that? Because I was in university at the time and I had done a bunch of um, musical theater. I did a bunch of creative stuff in high school and I was actually studying computer science yeah. and I was on a varsity golf team at the time. So I had no time for creative outlet, but I found YouTube and I was like, I'm just going to create fun little videos. So I bought an awful webcam and that was how I started. Oh my gosh. Now let's fast forward through the, the, I don't know, 15 plus years of that journey together. So that was back in 2006. I did sketch comedy and just whatever until about 2010 okay. when I graduated university and I really wanted to go travel. And so I got a working holiday to New Zealand and on my adventures in New Zealand, I was like, I want to share this. I want to film this with and um, like all my amazing experiences that I'm going to do. So I started vlogging it. Now, vlogging had been around since like 2009. So that wasn't a new concept, but most people in the travel sphere were kind of doing more blogging. So written, that was really, really big in 2010. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm not a good writer. I tried it. <laughs> and I was like, this isn't for me. This is not my creative platform. I really enjoyed video. And so I did travel vlogs. And that kind of took off. Um, in a sense, and I became kind of known for it. And then I started getting reached out by like companies and tours and boards and, and it just became my whole career and whole identity till now. <laughs> I'm still doing and it. And it still is. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. So was there a point in your journey where your channel started to take off and it looked like something that would be not just a hobby you know, you know, sketch comedy, throwing things up there, but like a legitimate career. Mm -hmm. So it's a tricky one. So monetization came in 2008. I was not one of the first ones in the monetization program, but within the first groupings of creators that got invited into the platform uh, to monetize videos. Now, you weren't earning much. There's no sponsor content at this time. And so all you kind of were writing on was like these, the ads that were being sold on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And um, it wasn't enough to be full time in unless you were like the top, top creator mm -hmm. at the time. 
And so I was still in university and kind of dabbling with it. And I was doing like part-time jobs. Like in 2010, I was working in various jobs in New Zealand, temp work, while I was also doing YouTube. In 2009, I was kind of doing, I tried to go full-time YouTube, but it wasn't enough money. So like Mm. I had to take on other jobs. A lot of it was waitressing because I wanted something that was flexible with my hours. So I, I could create videos, I could travel, but I could also make some money if I needed to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did that kind of like that part-time YouTube, part-time job until about 2012, um, 11 and 12. And I got my first kind of really big contract and I made some really cool YouTube friends. And I was like, you know what? They're doing this full time. I should just, I need to focus. I need to commit because like, mm-hmm. Again, back then, you didn't view YouTube as a career. It it wasn't like people were making money. People were making names for themselves. But it's not like the influencer industries that it is nowadays. There just wasn't the infrastructure. There wasn't the consistency. There wasn't the knowledge. And there wasn't the the money available. There's no brand sponsorships that you kind of most uh, influencers and creators kind of live on Mm -hmm. uh, aside from like that aren't making the big dollars on AdSense with the crazy views. Yeah. So I was, it it was a big risk uh, to take at the time, but that's when I was like, you know what? I really, I need to give this my hundred percent of everything. And I did. And it took a couple years of, you know, just living paycheck to paycheck, like funding my travels, kind of just putting everything back into making this work until about like, I want, end of 2014 2015 and then it just the money came like straight up it just the industry evolved enough to sustain it more full-time for us middle of the road creators so not the top tier the top tier you're always going to be able to make money because you have that audience but us middle of the road kind of you know the the bigger big channels but not big enough yeah, we could make a living. From it. And then I've been full time, um, comfortably incomed since then. Wow. So it sounds like prior to being able to really monetize it, you were passionate about YouTube or you you saw it as something what was that's so hard to be able to have that vision to see when there's not even like a monetization opportunity there. So what was your goal with YouTube at the time? That kind of kept you going. Well, yeah. So I started as a creative outlet. Mm -hmm. I viewed it as a creative outlet. I've always been a very outgoing, creative person. And when I, like I said, when I went to university, I was studying computer science. I started engineering and I switched to computer science and I was playing varsity golf. So I was competing uh, three to four times uh, a week, like, playing golf in tournaments, traveling for tournaments. And in between that, trying to do my computer science homework and whatnot. Like I just had crazy hours and I missed the creative side of it because I had the physical, I had that sports, that kind of, um, I don't know, uh, that sort of side. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I had the intellectual, Mm -hmm. but, um, so that was my first initial creative drive that push that really really spurred me that I was like this was just fun like the people that got into YouTube back in the day it was because it was just fun Mm -hmm. it there was no there was no I would say for like 90% of people joining YouTube there was no long-term goal there was no ulterior motives of like I want to build my business I want to build my brand I want to build blah 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 it was just pure this is cool this is fun um, now why I've stuck with it since then, mm-hmm. honestly, it's the best job in the world. <laughs> like there have been a couple times in my careers when I was like, uh, I'm done. It happened twice where I'm like, I'm going to go back to a regular job, you know, like this YouTube thing, it's not really working out. It's not making me enough money. It's, it's too much work or I don't know. It's, you know, creatively, it's not as I'm not creating what I want or the numbers aren't there. And I was like, I'll just go back to doing a regular job. YouTube is one of the best jobs you can ever have. And that's not to say it doesn't have its struggles because hundred percent, I'm sure you know, yeah. there's a lot of struggles with YouTube and a lot of downsides, but 
the grass is definitely greener on this side. Um, just being able, and now especially as a mom, like I can create my own hours. I can work around and I could spend all of this time with my son because I'm still doing YouTube because I can, I can create, I could take on the projects I want. Mm -hmm. I can create on the hours that I want. I mean, even just running errands, it's just being your own boss. And now this is not YouTube specific, but just being your own boss is just so freeing. Yeah. And I love that aspect of it. Yeah. And so what have you found? Maybe there's a few of the main kind of differences or changes that happen, both good or bad, as a result of going from an environment where people were joining it for creativity and for fun to nowadays, you know, people know the opportunity. So most people or a lot of people are starting a channel with the intention of a business or making money. What what have you seen as like the pros and cons of that? So um, definitely back in the day, uh, there used to be a lot more collaboration for the sake of collaboration. Mm. Uh, nowadays, you see collaboration as more of a business transaction. Like, you know, oh, we're going to collaborate on this video. We're going to collaborate on this idea. We're going to do blah, blah, blah. We're going to, so we could share our audiences, share our things, gain boosted up. Mm -hmm. And that kind of translates with a lot of things. Everything is viewed more from business perspective. And that's not necessarily because of its, uh, because it's later in its, the, it's not, the platform's not in infancy anymore. It's more matured. It's just the fact that when there's money involved, when anything is money involved, mm -hmm. you're going to view it as a business transaction. And mm -hmm. as soon as you go full time, as soon as you go full time, suddenly the choices that you make creatively of the content you're going to do are going to change. Yeah. And, and that's just the reality of making that your job. Uh, there are people that didn't like that. Like there have been creators that have come and they've left or they've scaled down because creatively it stifled them when they had to focus on it being a business like oh I need to create a videos I should create videos about x because it's trending right now or it's doing really well or you know like YouTube with analytics they'll always go like view your analytics make more videos like that yeah but sometimes you're like how many videos of this I don't know let me speak like <laughs> let's Example, lip gloss. How yeah. many videos of this lip gloss am I going to do, even if it gets me half a million views? Creatively, you know, there's only so long you could do that. And then you just, it, you're just doing it because it's a paycheck and you get that yeah. burnout for mm -hmm. sure. So that is a big aspect of it. Also, at the beginning, things were a lot less polished. Again, think of TikTok in 2020. Mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. it was like. Mm -hmm. It was just whatever all over the place people experimenting it's not it wasn't highly edited it wasn't highly storytell like in storytelling it was more real and raw um kind of where youtube is starting to head back into like away from the the super polished super perfected um videos that you kind of are trending right now. Like the Mr. B style videos that are just all over the place okay. where it's like, Those are doo, 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 blah, blah, blah. yeah. Yeah. Where it's like crazy money and this and nothing like that existed. It was just people sitting down on webcams that maybe you would do like a couple edits because you flubbed something at some point mm -hmm. and whatever you posted it. You didn't worry about the thumbnail. Didn't really worry about the title. You're like, yeah, sure, I'll title it something. I'll I'll select a frame, whatever. Upload, yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. So different. It, you really need so much more strategy these days. Like you said, yeah. like back in the day. Yeah, you do. Like, oh, just select a frame for a thumbnail. Whereas that process today of creating a thumbnail can take hours and hours and hours. <laughs> So it's, yeah. there's a lot more thought uh, that has to be put into it. So what does your kind of routine look like now as a mom, as somebody who does a travel, you know, vlogging type of channel? Um, what is your routine now in regards to staying consistent and creating the content and doing all the things that you have to do to kind of make sure your you know videos are performing? Mm -hmm. So one of the big things that we've 
done that we started to do. So me and my husband, we work together on the channel is that we've cut down our video production to about once a month, <laughs> which is doesn't one day a month? so little one video a month. I know well, one video. Which so you only upload so, one video a month. Yeah, that's our current thing. We're trying to get back to two. Um, okay. Ideally, we'd like to go to pre pre pandemic pre baby. We were about once a week. Yeah. Okay. Um, but there's two things that happened in the pandemic. One, we had a baby. Yeah. <laughs> so we kind of alternate between childcare with him. The second thing that happened is short form video. And honestly, short form video is so hard mm-hmm. as coming from a long term video creator to now being like, I need to prioritize short form mm-hmm. too. And you can't sleep on it. Mm-hmm. It's just everybody wants it right now. Every platform wants it. And so for us to create to the caliber that we want. So like we're, we could put we could put out more videos per uh, month if we wanted. But we want to put out better videos that take more time, that take more effort, that are just more put together Mm -hmm. because that's kind of what YouTube wants right now. Mm -hmm. They want those big pinnacle videos. And then we need to create all the short form Mm -hmm. on top of that. Mm -hmm. If we weren't doing any short form, we could have more videos, but that's just the trade off as a creator that you always got to make because there's so much, every platform will demand a million things from you. And if you go, 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 go like this. Yeah. You could sustain it for maybe a few months, maybe a year. And then you're going to be so burnt out that you are just going to crash. And it's going to be way harder to come back from that crash because you're going to go like this and then it's going to go like this. And then suddenly that drop is so demotivating. Yeah, it's hard. You are going to, you're just going to feel awful Mm -hmm. versus if you just kept that a little bit steadier. So, you know, you're not growing as fast but you kept it a little bit more. If you do have a drop, it's not going to be as drastic. It's not going to feel as bad. It's not going to put you in a more negative headspace that so many creators get into. And so that's what I found works really well for me. Like just kind of taking the slower pain, of yeah. it, but being more consistent, being more steady. Like I've <laughs> been uploading videos since 2006 I've only ever had a I've had two gaps of two months where it was like two two and a half months ever that I've never uploaded a video um the first one was when I thought I quit YouTube when I was like oh I'm done with YouTube I'm gonna get a real job back in like I don't know 2010 yeah. ish after like when I was like oh I moved to New Zealand I'm gonna travel and blah 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 and then I was like oh no I'll just put some videos up. The YouTube. The second one was when I was pregnant and it was my first trimester and I was like, I can't physically oh, yeah. be in yeah. front. I couldn't do anything. I was so nauseous. I was like, oh, I can't be in front of a computer for more than an hour at a time. So there was no videos. Yeah. Um, that's it. So like to to create consistently for that many years, to have those many ideas, you have to lower the bar a little bit and take that hit to be able to sustain and that's what I've found yeah wow so then with right now with short form are you creating YouTube shorts are you doing repurposing them on TikTok what is kind of your short form uh, strategy right now so there are videos that I create specifically for each platform but most of it kind of gets repurposed Mm. so I feel like that's with most creators it's like why wouldn't you repurpose it even though each platform is like "Mm, create for our platform but you're like unless you're going to pay me directly to just create for your platform I'm going to repurpose it Mm -hmm. now some things do better on other platforms than others um and then some I'm like no you know this is more suited for my TikTok or this is more suited for my shorts or this Mm -hmm. is more that and then I would only be on those things but yeah it's like you got to be doing multiple videos a week that's short form content and short form content. It's not, you can spend a little time or you can spend a lot of time. And I'm kind of in between where it's like, I want to make these good short form videos. So it takes time. And so I don't know. It's a, it's a balancing act. 
Yeah. So, so how many, how often are you uploading shorts onto, to YouTube? Um, I'm doing a couple times a week. Okay. Yeah. So and at least two to three ish times a week on YouTube and same with the other platforms. Are you finding more success with short form on TikTok or YouTube or Instagram or where are you finding the most success with the short form? Um, TikTok and Instagram, to be honest, mm -hmm. I know some creators have have really seen a lot of like subscriber growth and gains from short form in YouTube. I feel like I haven't seen that. I still feel like my long form videos on YouTube are the ones that grow my sub base the most. Yeah. Uh, but that I know that's not true for every creator. I've seen other creators just explode from their short form video. Mm -hmm. But one of the issues that they kind of stumble upon, like stumble into is that if people come to your channel and they subscribe because of your short form, are they actually going to watch your long form or are they only going to watch a short form? And what kind of audience do you want? Do you want people that are going to watch your long form? You're going to watch a short form. I view my short form as a extension, more of like that raw, going back to the roots of where YouTube was, like more of that little bit of a un, more uncut. So like I say, I find a middle ground, but I do want that because everything is polished. Like there's no real uncut anymore. It's it's always, oh yeah, I take the best clip. I'm still going to edit it. I'm still going to do these things to make it a good video. But there is like, a, a, more of a realness, more of a rawness to it versus that you would find in the long form content. Mm -hmm. That's not saying the long form isn't real or raw. It's definitely is. It's just a different style of storytelling. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, that's interesting because that's the one thing that I found too with YouTube because I, I work with YouTubers. So my main thing is YouTube is that with the shorts, you know, there, you just kind of have to think about like, what, what are you wanting to grow here? And, you know, they've just rolled out monetization, as I'm sure you see, it's like literally nothing. Like they're making such a big deal about, I'm like, okay. And I suspected that. I suspected it wasn't going to be a lot, especially compared to long form, because when you think about having multiple ads on one long video versus a creator sharing, you know, an ad with a bunch of other creators, it's just going to be less. But the issue of putting content up I think initially people were doing it to bring people to their long form videos, but I found that that audience was not necessarily translating. So I think it's interesting you brought that up because I feel the same way about that. So then I'm, I'm kind of, I am kind of wondering like, where is short form headed on, on YouTube? Or I guess it depends on the creator, what they want to build. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's an unknown. Um, with all of these things, there's been many times in <laughs> again, I've been on YouTube since 2006 that YouTube has brought features in. They've experimented yeah. and they've rolled it out or they've changed it out. It's happened a lot of times in the career in the like lifespan of YouTube because they're pushing it. It's always and this is just in general social media. Always do what the platform's pushing because that is going to be your easiest way to grow, grow and hack the system. Hack the system, right? Like when Instagram pulled out stories for the first time, do stories. Like when they pulled out, well, there still are with reels, but like do reels. YouTube's pushing shorts right now. Mm -hmm. It would be silly not to experiment with shorts, and if not anything, at least you're just kind of like I haven't found that short form hurts my channel, mm -hmm. which is the good thing. Like, and I've. I have uploaded some off base shorts, like shorts that I'm like, this is totally not re probably relevant to my audience. They probably won't care about this. And like the worst I lost was like 20 subs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On, that was like the worst video, 20 subs. And I'm like, okay, so 20 subs, whatever in the grand scheme of things of like one short. And then most, most just don't do like, there's no negatives because that was like my one worry, like going into it. I'm like, okay, if I start uploading all these like silly shorts or things that are my audience doesn't like, are they going to just, what are they going to do? Are they going to unsubscribe? But I've just found that no, they just don't watch them if they don't want to watch them. So that's the one thing. So I, that's why I've kept kind of experimenting with shorts. And if anything, it's just kind of like 
helping build, like this is with short form in general, it's like exercising a muscle, right? The more you do something, the better you're gonna get at it. And because every platform wants long short form video right now, it is worthwhile to exercise that muscle. Mm -hmm. And then once the kind of dust settles and maybe you're like, maybe shorts kind of disappears or it's, you know, it YouTube doesn't prioritize it as much. Um, same thing with Instagram, which they already have. They've already backpedaled with reels. Yeah, with they the even admitted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've seen Which that. is exciting because in one sense, you're like, okay, thank you for bringing back photos. The, you know, you were the main photo platform. Mm -hmm. Um they do, they backpedal. And so, okay, when the dust settles, then you can kind of be like, all right, maybe I'll, if I enjoy doing the short form, I'll just keep doing it on this platform and I'll return to this. And that's kind of the creator journey. Uh, a lot of times you're just taking guesses at what will work and what will happen and where to be like when new platforms come out and you're like, oh, do I jump on this? Do I take advantage of this? Mm -hmm. You're, it's always a risk of like, is my time worth the effort? Do I think this is going to pay off? Oh, wow. That was YouTube back in the day, right? Like I just did it. Mind you, it wasn't monetization. But when I took the leap to go full time, mm -hmm. I was guessing that YouTube wasn't going anywhere for a long time. And that I could build something more out of this, that it would continue growing. Yeah. Um, people take that with TikTok, right? Like, with the tick, that's why everyone jumped on it in 2020, 2021, because it was just suddenly exploded. And the first people that were there exploded the most. So that's always a risk and kind of like a gamble you have to take as a creator is like, where are you putting your effort and time into? And sometimes you get it right, sometimes you get it wrong. Yeah. So since, like, since you're doing all three platforms or short form, I'm curious, where do you find are the best monetization opportunities for short form? Instagram, mm. Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. Mm. Um, Reels tend to do, at least for me, the best view wise. Um, it gets the most engagement. I find I find that YouTube Shorts is actually a very low form of engagement. I mm -hmm. think just because the way that the platform is, it's not like as e conducive to yeah. commenting and engaging yeah. with the short form videos is is easier with like reels especially because like they appear in your feed and and whatnot um and just instagram in general for the general creator is just the easiest because of all the influencer marketplaces that have already built on instagram and knowing instagram and especially in travel travel loves instagram because it's such a visual medium right yeah. like it, yeah. travel is just stunning and so people again it was photos and now Real. All this are it's transitioned to reels. So that is where a lot of um, brands and sponsorships and money involved. Mm. Not uh, not uh, monetization. Monetization with all short form, it's like unless you are hitting like million Millions. views, million it, views yeah, per video, yeah. like yeah, it's not like okay. find another way to monetize. You can be full time and not be hitting millions of views a hundred percent. But you have to do other ways of monetizing. Yeah. So when I yeah when I said monetizing, I was referring more towards just like making money in general. So is it mainly because I've also seen like I don't know if affiliate really works as well with short form as it does with long form. So is the monetization that you're finding you know success with on Instagram mainly brand deals or is there something else? Yeah, I would say brand deals. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, with links. Because short form, you have such a short period of time and like you generally have to click down into the yes. description to like get people to click the link. It's harder. I, you, you still will get like more engagement. If you really want to go somewhere link heavy, it's like you do stories or something mm -hmm. or YouTube where mm -hmm. you're like, you can expand upon and you can be like, here's a ton of resources. Like you could fill it out. I don't know. It's still... a yeah, it's definitely a trickier one. I think Instagram, like for reels, it's more of like awareness and like brand sponsorships where you get I like ideas and stuff like that. Again, I'm in travel, so I don't do a lot of like product placement. Yeah. I know Instagram is like implementing more product based like linkage or integrations into their platform, but 
I mean, I, I'm not going to link you to a country or something like that. It's no, a little trickier. I imagine for you, a lot of it is maybe it's not even, maybe it's not even like money wise. It's like maybe free trips or the opportunity to stay at amazing places for free. And there's a lot of value to that, especially if you love to travel and you have a travel channel. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. Well, like any kind of contest or giveaway stuff generally does well on any platform that you mm -hmm. probably put it on. Mm -hmm. Um. People like free stuff. <laughs> everyone likes free stuff. That's true. Um, everyone likes the opportunity to get free stuff. So that one I don't think is as platform specific if that's yeah. like how you're doing it or whatnot. Yeah. Do you have any of these questions or concerns about your YouTube channel? Did I pick the right niche? Should I be focusing on this audience for my channel? What kind of videos should I create that will attract a really good loyal audience. Why am I growing so slow? I'm so overwhelmed with YouTube and I don't know if what I'm doing is the right thing to do to grow. Let me tell you, if you are thinking any of these things, you are not alone. Those are some of the questions I get most often as a YouTube strategist and coach for the last seven years and that is why I created my all new $39 audience attraction system. The audience attraction system is based off of my experience coaching hundreds of YouTubers, many of which have grown tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of subscribers and attracted millions of views. I took the system that I use with my coaching clients and packaged it into the audience attraction system so that you now have access to this incredible action plan at a crazy low affordable cost of $39. I want to give you the system you need to skyrocket your YouTube channel and start seeing results ASAP. Whether you're ready to blow up and scale the YouTube channel you already have, or you're just getting started but want to start seeing YouTube growth yesterday, the audience attraction system is the perfect fit for you. You can learn more about it by going to ericaviera.net forward slash Y-A-A-S. Again, that is ericaviera.net forward slash Y-A-A-S. All right, Nadine, so we're heading towards the last part of the interview, and that's where I ask everybody the same questions I ask um, that have come onto the show. Kind of like a rapid fire kind of thing. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Uh, first question, what is your number one struggle with YouTube? <sighs> Inconsistent view count, <laughs> I would say. Inconsistency. Um like I'm used to it and but like when you put time it's like you could put so much work into one video and it flops and put no work into another and like or not work little work into another one mm -hmm. and it explodes and you're like ah and it's just frustrating because you're like I put so much work in it that's one why didn't yeah. you do well yeah that yeah. as a creator is the biggest role yeah, definitely. If you were to start over right now with your YouTube channel, I mean, that was a long time ago, what would you do differently? Hmm. I, ooh, that's a good question. I would maybe, again, make less, like, I don't know, focus more on an, a niche up again. Uh, <laughs> That's a hard question. Sorry. I'm like, oh my gosh, now I'm stumped now. No, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, I think be more consistent across the board. And and what I mean is that like, because my channel's so old, I have different thumbnail styles. I have different creative styles. I have different video styles. I have blah, 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 blah. It's all over yeah, the place. Yeah, yeah. So it's trickier. So I have to constantly got to go through and remove videos, update videos, mm -hmm. update playlists, refresh branding, blah, blah, blah. So it's like a lot of maintenance and I get a lot of like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like starting fresh would actually be really exciting because you're like starting new. And I actually think I could probably do better with my videos. I think if I put the videos that I'm doing now on a brand new fresh channel, I think they would get better views and mm -hmm. do better as a channel. But the problem is I'm too established yeah. in other things that I would it would be harder for me to find where all my um sponsorships come in so mm -hmm. that's a trade-off yeah um what is your favorite video on your channel oh my kilimanjaro series i love my kilimanjaro series <laughs> it's two videos it's not mm -hmm. a single video it's okay. actually it's a five video series that's okay but um it's the most it's the hardest physical thing I've ever done, climbing the highest mountain in Africa. And then I also got engaged <laughs> on top of it. So oh, that sounds, that's so pretty cool to have that document. Special. 
Yeah. They have that, the whole thing documented is really cool. Um, yeah. What is your number one tip for preserving your mental health as a YouTube creator? Don't look, don't focus too much on the analytics. Like don't, don't just sit there, refresh your numbers. Don't, don't spiral down. Why? Like I mentioned the whole, like, why didn't my, that video do better than this? Just move on, move on to the next, move on to the next. Yeah. Don't, you can look, look with an analytical mind of like, okay, let's analyze. What yeah. did I do wrong here? Oh, maybe I can change up the title of this, but don't let yourself get emotionally too attached to any single piece of content yeah. because there will be hundreds of pieces of content that you create and you never know what's going to blow up. You never know what's going to go viral, which one's not. And you need to look at your creating your, your creating career as a catalog instead of a single per single video entity. And I think that will just help your mental health and not getting so down on yourself because it's easy when you're doing great. Like when your videos are going good, you're like, oh, this is great. Oh my gosh, my number is so exciting. But when it's not, that is where people, that's the struggle. That's the hard part. Mm -hmm. And it's going to happen to you. So figuring out how to, how to get through that is key. I love that. That's such good advice. It's just like, move on to the next, move on to the next, move on to the next, because you've got to stay consistent. You've got to keep creating every video you create is an opportunity to get better. And you can stay stuck in a video it's just the worst thing. It's like, I work with a lot of creators and then I'll, I'll get people um, working with me, signing on for me, signing on with me to help them. And then <laughs> I'm like, we only have a certain period of time together. Like upload a video, like stop, let's stop going back to like, why isn't this video from like two months ago not performing or why? It's like, move on. Like it, it's such, yep. if, you can, on. if you can kind of have that mentality and I love what you said about Look at your analytics with an analytical mind, but don't get too emotionally connected or invested in it. Um, I think that's such good advice. So I, I love that. Have you ever, well, you kind of talked about it um, a little bit, actually. You said there are two times, but this was a question. Have you ever wanted to give up on your channel? What happened there and how did you get back on track? Yeah, yeah. I have uh, <laughs> a couple times. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I just, I went and worked a real job. <laughs> like I, you just, if you were a creator and you actually are able to make this, like if you're not doing it full time yet, then you're already working a different job. So that's a different mindset. But if you are doing this and you have been doing this full time um, and this, it really is the amount of opportunities that have come through my door or my door, my email, <laughs> since email, but um, the amount of opportunities, the amount of things that you could do, the freedom that you can get. It's like, taking yourself and just bringing, being grateful. It's like looking, go spend time. This happens a lot with creators that kind of hang out with too many other creators. Mm. Like this happens if you go to LA and then people, <laughs> but if you spend time with real people <laughs> in the real world uh. that work regular jobs, you will realize that your job is really awesome. Mm -hmm. Being a creator. Yeah. There's some downsides, but the end of the day, you're creating fun. I mean, I'm, tr I get to travel for free and create videos about it. Mm -hmm. Like that's my job. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really awesome. And I just bring, I try to like bring that gratitude and just refocus on like, what would the alternative be and just view your life? How the alternative, if you were to quit YouTube and like, I'm not saying quitting isn't for everyone. Like don't ever quit. There are hundred percent times where, yeah, okay. You, like, you know what? This has run its course. Mm -hmm. I am not being fulfilled from this as well. Am I just doing it because everyone else is doing it and, and I, I should be told it? Or am I, is there still a part of me that still really, really wants to do it? Mm -hmm. And you have to answer that yourself because sometimes, yeah, you know what? Maybe it is time to move on, to focus your energy elsewhere and to do something else that can actually fulfill you more if you aren't getting that from creating and YouTube. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but for me, and I still look at it and I'm like, no, I still enjoy it more than I don't. Like the 
the positives still outweigh the negatives to me. And it's worth the struggle because every job is a struggle and every job is a grind. And there's bad days and blah, blah, blah. blah. That's every single person is going to deal with it. There's no perfect, like, this is the best job in the world. Not even the travel video people, travel hosts or whatever. That mm. it, It's not the best job in the world. There are downsides to it. But it definitely is worth doing. It's worth putting your effort into um, if you gain that fulfillment and it makes you happy. So, I don't know. Grass is greener sort of mentality. Yeah. Definitely. I, I like how you said too, like, you know, if you're around a lot of YouTubers, it's like they get used to kind of complaining about certain things. And it, it's just like with any job, it's like, you know, anything, right? Any, any, and even if you're in like a highly amazing, privileged, great situation, the people in there, there's things that, you know, that people don't like and they start, you know, complaining or whatever. You can kind of get caught up in that. And then you kind of go into the real world and realize like, wow, that is really, really cool. So it's like, like, you know, like in the real world of, of, of the grand scheme of things of what you could be doing and all the millions of different jobs out there, it's like, YouTube is really, really, really cool. So, but sometimes it takes yeah. kind of removing yourself from that to really realize that. So, yeah. yeah. And like, I love bringing like friends and family on trips with us. Mm, that's and that's cool. when you really see it too. Mm. Like when you bring your friends and family kind of into your world and let them kind of experience some of the cool things, you see how they're like, oh, this is so cool. Like, mm. oh, like, like eh, yeah. you know, like they're you see with, like, so excited. Like, this You're like, like yeah. a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. It kind of helps you to like put things in perspective. I love that. Um, what, uh, any video you're particularly excited about that just bombed on your channel? <laughs> There's been many. <laughs> yeah. There's been That's many. the most common answer um, I get, I'll tell you. Yeah, there's been many. Like, I'm very excited about every video, pretty much. I'll do like 99% of the videos I post up. I'm very excited about. There's always like, a, there's like a couple that I posted that I've been like, yeah. ugh. Yeah. But most videos I'm very excited about posting. And then I'm like, what? Why didn't you do this? Like, I don't know. Most recently, I would guess, um, I did this amazing collab. I do it. I did it um, every single year for up, leading up to the pandemic and the pandemic, you know, it was a uh, where to travel. I call it my where to travel collab. It's mm -hmm. where I ask all the top travel YouTubers, like, where should they go visit? Or where should you as a viewer go visit mm -hmm. every year um, based on places they've, they've just recently been to and their experiences there. So it is a huge collaboration across all the top travel vloggers it takes a lot of time to kind of organize and get together I'm always so amazed and proud of it because these are solid recommendations of amazing places that you can go travel to um, based on the year and so I brought it back this year and it's not performed where I wanted it to be and I don't know why because like it used to perform amazing on my channel interesting and this one didn't do as well. And I'm like, it's such a good video. There's so much great info there. <sighs> Makes me sad. <laughs> but on to the next. Yeah, on right? to the next. That's on to the next. Yeah. On to the next. Yep, yep. And who knows, with YouTube, sometimes old videos will randomly start picking up. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that's funny. What is the biggest opportunity you got as a result of being a YouTube creator? I mean, I get to do awesome projects. Uh, travel to places that are wild um <laughs> that's, then get paid to do it um just like a couple examples um I went to the White House oh wow right to the White House um back in 2014 yeah it was like a travel um blogger and citizenship summit it was basically like the top 130 travel media uh at the time were invited so it was a mixture of like press newspapers right like regular journalists wow. bloggers yeah. and that's so cool youtubers um we got invited because the obama administration at the time really wanted to promote um uh that's studying so abroad with oh. their student population they really wanted to promote um going abroad gaining that knowledge and viewed us travel media as a a way to kind of 
expire them. Wow. Uh, another thing, cool. like I've been uh, behind the scenes in like I got to go into the Turkish Airlines like air factory and like see them working on the planes and seeing how they put the food together and all this like cool behind the scenes stuff, which I mean, to some people it would be like, whatever, but I think it's really, really cool. That is so cool. And then like, I've stayed at like five, like amazing five star resorts, like Fiji where like the bachelor filmed at like the whole to ourself. All right. So what would you say has kept you going over the last, I don't know, X years as a, how long? 15? I don't know. Long time as a creator. Oh, 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the same thing. Just, it's a good job. It pays well. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. And I get to travel. Like, yeah. it, it's worth the struggles of f- figuring out ideas, filming videos, putting it together. Like, it's just worth it to, to do the effort for this lifestyle. Yeah. And to have this as, like, this is my job that I get paid for. So. I think there is a whole other level with it being travel that you just get to go to really cool things and places. and. Yeah. yeah. That's that's cool. I think that's also it definitely does make a difference. Like if you were a creator that just kind of filmed in studio mm-hmm. versus like I get to I get to go to cool places yeah. as part of my work. So I do a bit of both. Like I film in studio as well and 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 travel and you definitely need that balance or else like if you go too much in one direction it's it, you'll get burnt out because yeah. it's a lot. But yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. What and finally, what is your number one piece of advice you would tell someone who is just starting out on YouTube? Know your why. Like, know why you are starting this channel. Why mm-hmm. do you want to dedicate a whole lot of time and effort and your life into building this brand? Because it's it's not going to be just YouTube. It's You're going to eventually move to the other platforms. And, and there's going to be a lot of learning and a lot of trial and error. And it's going to take you a long time before you actually see any money or mm-hmm. any success on it. Unless you're like a couple channels I could never name in like the history of YouTube that just blew up after like two videos. Mm-hmm. That's not going to happen to you. Mm-hmm. I almost 100% agree to you. It's not going to happen to you. It's going to yeah. take a lot of videos to grind it out. And you need to know why are you doing this in the first place? Is it just because you want the fame and the lifestyle that you should provide, the lifestyle is great. Yeah, okay, that is definitely a legitimate reason. Um, fame, I would be a little bit more hesitant if you just want to be like pop. Like if you're just looking for like that validation, that popularity, you know. Like I think the biggest thing is you need to have a creative drive. Um, that kind of drives your idea. Like why, what are you going to create? What's going to be your pillar, uh, your main bubble mm-hmm. of things that you are going to build that you can talk about for a long, long time and you can create. And it's okay not to know that when you're just starting out. Like it's totally cool to experiment and just figure out what you like creating, mm-hmm. what you think works, blah, blah. But when you kind of settle on it and when you, when you finally are like, okay, I'm going to commit to this. Like when I committed to travel, I was like, I'm committing to travel. Like, this is it. Mm-hmm. And now that's 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 it. Like, it, it's really hard to kind of pivot. You can kind of, you can go a little bit outside of your bubble, but it's really hard to kind of, to really pivot um, without taking a huge step back. And for most creators, they they wouldn't, they wouldn't um, weather that storm of stepping back. So really know why you want to create content and be passionate about the creation process and everything else will just oh, kind of follow and that will be easier to do than to to create the passion is a lot harder than to figure out how to create a title you know like ai so can do that true. for you now yeah so. so true i love that it's creating the passion is is not it's so essential. So that's it's so true. Well, Nadine, thank you so much for coming on to the show and sharing all your amazing wisdom and insight after being on YouTube for so many years. So for our listeners and viewers that are not familiar with you and your content, where can they find you? 
Well, thank you so much for having me and listening to me. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm Haney Dean. So H-E-Y-N-A-D-I-N-E -E, everywhere on all, all, all social all platforms on YouTube and, <laughs> and everything. Yes. Awesome. Nadine. Well, thank you so, so much for coming on. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. And uh, see you later. Bye. Bye.